Hi and welcome to lecture 7. In lecture 7 we're going to discuss a very important idea for organisms and the human body in particular. That idea is homeostasis. Inside the body there are a lot of different anatomical structures and a lot of different physiological processes that are going on all the time. And the body needs to continuously monitor them and adjust them as necessary. Well, this idea of keeping those conditions within acceptable ranges is the idea of homeostasis. Homeostasis is the body's ability to maintain a relatively stable internal environment in response to changing conditions. Now, the body maintains homeostasis by using control systems. Now, these control systems have three components. The first is the receptor then the control center, then the effector. The receptor is a structure that will detect a change in a variable. Now this variable can be either external to the body or it can be internal. For example, we could have a change in temperature. Let's say you walk outside and it's colder outside. That change in temperature would then be the stimulus. And the body senses this by using sensory nerves. Next, the control center is a structure that will receive the input from the receptor and interpret it. It will then initiate a change by sending a message out to the effector, and we'll cover the effector here in a minute. Now, in the body, there's a couple different control systems or control centers. One is the nervous system, the second is the endocrine system. The nervous system is a relatively fast acting control system, whereas the endocrine system is a slower, more sustained control system. Examples for the nervous system is the regulation of blood pressure. Whenever it rises, it will take and make changes within the body so that the blood pressure will return to normal. And the endocrine system, an example would be the parathyroid hormone, which is released from the parathyroid gland, that will regulate calcium levels within the body, i.e. the blood. Lastly, we have the effector. The effector is the structure that brings about the change to return whatever was affected back to normal. This can involve most body structures, an example would be muscles or glands or even things such as blood vessels. Now the homeostatic control systems will provide a response in a series of steps and we call this series of steps a feedback loop. Those steps are you have the stimulus, you have the detection of the stimulus by a receptor, these are the sensory receptors, the information is relayed to the control center, you have integration of that information and then an initiation of change. The control center will quote unquote decide what to do and then send the signal out to the effectors. Once the effectors receive that input, they will then return whatever had been changed back to its normal range. And that would be the idea of homeostasis. Here's a pictorial example showing the different steps. Here is our stimulus and the example here is something is too low. So that's the stimulus. You have the receptors that will detect it. It sends the information to the control center. The control center will then integrate that input. It sends a signal to the effector. The effector makes a change and the homeostasis is then restored. It is back to normal. Now an example of a homeostatic control system of a feedback loop is negative feedback loops and in a negative feedback loop it is a loop that will minimize the change of a stimulus. In other words if a stimulus would raise your blood pressure the negative feedback loop would try to minimize this and move in the opposite direction and lower your blood pressure. It is by far the most common process in the body and what you have is in 
negative feedback loops, they are trying to maintain a normal level which is at its set point. Now it will fluctuate around the set point which I will show you on the next slide. So for example, if a stimulus increases, this negative feedback loop will cause a decrease in the stimulus. On the flip side, if the stimulus decreases, the negative feedback loop will cause an increase in the stimulus. Here is a slide showing the regulation of a value through negative feedback. The idea is that the value will fluctuate around a set point. This dotted line represents the set point. What happens is as the value increases, as it goes to the top of the range of the limit, the body will sense this and take a corrective action. This corrective action in negative feedback will be the opposite of the stimulus. So it drives that value back towards the set point. But the problem is that it doesn't stop at the set point. It goes below the set point to the bottom limit of the range. When the body detects that it, that it is at the bottom limit of the range, it will take another corrective action and cause it to raise again towards the set point. But again, it doesn't stop at the set point and hits the top of the range again. And this continues over and over and over in the body. Now an example would be temperature regulation. This is where the body temperature, let's say, would drop. You have sensory receptors that detect this and they send the signal to the part of the brain called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus will send signals through the nerves to the blood vessels in the skin to vasoconstrict, that is to decrease the size of their internal openings. This in turn causes less blood to circulate to the surface of the body. Because there's less blood, less heat is released through the skin. A second way is that nerve impulses are sent to skeletal muscles and that causes the muscles to start moving, causing shivering. This generates heat. In addition, you have nerve impulses sent to the smooth muscles of the hair follicles causing goosebumps. Now here is a figure showing the example just given. Here is the stimulus which is the decrease in temperature. It is detected by sensory receptors in the skin. The hypothalamus receives the signal from the receptors. That's the control center. It sends its own signal to the effectors. In this case it is the blood vessels the hair follicles and the muscles. Heat is then conserved and you get a return back to homeostasis. The opposite of that is if the body temperature would rise. A couple steps are the same. Sensory receptors will detect it, signal the hypothalamus, then the hypothalamus sends signals to the effectors. Only in this case the effectors, instead of vasoconstricting, will vasodilate. That is, they will increase the inside opening of the vessels. This will then allow more blood to, to circulate to the body surface and more heat is released through the skin. Here's a figure showing the process just described. You have the stimulus, which is the increase in temperature the receptors detect it. Signal is sent to the control center, the hypothalamus. That signal is then integrated and sent to the effectors. In this case, vasodilation. More heat is released and you get a return back to homeostasis. Some other examples of homeostatic regulation. The withdrawal reflex in response to injury. For example, if you step on attack, you automatically draw your foot back. The regulation of heart rate and blood pressure during exercise. You can change breathing rate in response to varying carbon dioxide levels. If the calcium levels change within the blood, the body will release parathyroid hormone. And if blood, glu if blood glucose changes within the body, the pancreas can release insulin. Now the opposite of negative feedback is positive feedback. In positive feedback you are going to maximize the change from the stimulus. 
it is the exact opposite of negative feedback because in negative feedback you are trying to minimize that change. This change will continue until a climactic event occurs. Now, positive feedback occurs much less frequently than negative feedback, but there are some specific examples. The first example is breastfeeding. And in breastfeeding, you have sensory detectors will detect the baby suckling. That is sent to the brain. In this case, it's the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus signals the pituitary gland, more specifically the posterior pituitary gland, to release the hormone oxytocin. Oxytocin will then stimulate the mammary gland to eject breast milk, and the baby will continue to suckle. And as the baby continues to suckle, the body detects it, and it will stimulate the pituitary to release more oxytocin. The more oxytocin that is released, the more breast milk that is ejected. Some other examples of positive feedback would be bl the blood clotting cascade and the uterine contractions during labor.